Halloween is about the three C's. We've talked about the creepy, we've talked about the costumes, so now it's time to talk about the candy. Oh, um, sorry, I mean candy in video games. Um, okay? Candy can be a very versatile thing in fantasy worlds, so here are the top 13 ways to use candy in video games. This isn't about ranking specific games, but ranking uses of candy which any game can do. So let's say there's a World of Warcraft expansion called, I don't know, Assault on Mount Gumdrop, and there's a katana made of rock candy. I would not include that game on the list. I would include using candy as a bladed weapon on the list. I would merely talk about the Assault on Mount Gumdrop game as an example of that use. Also, which definition of candy will we be using? Should I stick with boiled and thickened sugar? I think I'll go with for a broader definition, just so we can include things like chocolate bars. This also won't be limited to just Halloween candy, yet I won't include just any sweets, so no cakes or cookies. I also won't count perishables, so that means I can't count the sea salt ice cream in Kingdom Hearts, and that means using candy to bring friends together will be an honorable mention. I also can't count Disgaea Infinite using pudding to drive the plot, so candy as a MacGuffin will be another honorable mention. By the way, there are two MacGuffins in that game, the pretty salary is the other one. Before we start, this is the worst most disgusting use of candy in any video game ever. In this so-called Castlevania game, licorice and red licorice are items you can find. Now, a thing of licorice is often called a licorice whip, and a whip is the most iconic weapon in the whole Castlevania series, so you'd think the licorice would be a weapon, right? Well, no, it's a healing item. Come on, the proper use was given to the developers on a silver platter. This is why people say Konami is one of the worst developers right now! <sighs> okay, let's just start the list. The first use is to name your game after candy. For example, Lollipop Chainsaw. Well, this is certainly true. She uses a chainsaw and she likes lollipops. Though how many of you perverts pause just to stare and drool at that amazing shapely reference to horror filmmaker George A. Romero? Next use is to gain experience. Yes, level grinding is tedious busy work, so anything that cuts it down will be helpful. Take Pokemon using rare candy to gain one level for your Pokemon. Though one level for just one Pokemon, when you'll want at least about a dozen to each get to level 100, doesn't save that much time unless you use a duplication glitch. For a more active approach, we actually have candy as a bladed weapon on the list. I can't recall any real games that use rock candy katanas, so here's the lolly chop from Team Fortress 2. You can also fill your candy with power-ups like a Tootsie Roll Pop. In Mario Party 8, they evidently decided to take the power-ups from the previous games and dip them in candy. If bladed candy isn't your thing, how about blunt force trauma? In a DLC for Killer Instinct, Orchid has a holiday outfit that included replacing her combat batons with candy canes. These look pretty sick, so they can still hit hard. Too bad this apparently no longer is on sale, unless it's sold seasonally. You can also use candy when introducing characters. Bayonetta is a character that makes no secret of selling on <clears throat> her appeal. And in the second game, she does Christmas shopping in a style that, well, certainly fits the crazy but cool themes of the series. Before we see her face, we see her sucking on a lollipop. It's not shot in a dirty way, well, maybe not dirty for some, but the point is that all the close-ups don't show her face, but use the lollipop to enhance what we do see until the reveal of her literally bewitching smile. At that point, I'd probably be doing a goofy grin. Healing items aren't a cool kind of use, but necessary, especially in games that can boil down to battles of attrition. Candy for healing is not very commonly used, even in a certain game which should not have used it this way. <sighs> now, candy doesn't have much nutritional value or medicinal value, 
but in worlds where you can heal by eating roast turkey found on the ground after you punch a garbage can, I think candy's a bit more preferable. Secret of Mana is pretty basic here. You can use candy to heal 100 hit points, but you can heal over twice as much with chocolate. Hey hey, settle down your highnesses. Now the reason I chose this game is, I have a confession. It came out the year I turned 14, and I was one of those twerps who liked to interpret everything as dirty, though not to everyone's faces, I wasn't that stupid. But it didn't help that this game had an interesting translation for letting you know that your inventory was full, and it left me doing constant Beavis and Butthead chuckles. Though this message wasn't as funny, maybe all the syllables just killed the timing. The next use of candy is to make it a source of mystical power so you can cast magic. I think the game Darkened Sky could use a remake and not hide that it's product placement. It's not automatically a bad thing, people. Look at the Lego movie. Anyway, in this game, the more skills you have, the more magic power you have. Taste that rainbow. No, I'm not apologizing. Now, we've brought up candy as weapons before, but what about a whole arsenal? Anyway, you get outfits appropriate to the season and weapons appropriate to the season as in peppermint and wintergreen blades, and clubs shaped like candy canes, and mint-shaped shields. That is just freaking awesome. We mentioned candy as power-ups before, but what about creatures that need candy to activate their powers? In A Boy and His Blob, the second eponymous character uses special jelly beans to change its shape and abilities. Wonder what it could do with those every flavor jelly beans from Harry Potter. For more of being defensive with candy, how about using it as a deadbolt? What game would do that? Saints Row, bitches! The fourth game has DLC where you save Christmas, and in a series where you fist fight Satan, this set of missions is only the second most odd. The part that stuck out the most to me was a door barred with huge peppermint sticks, and I could go around and fight through the back door, or just lick my way through this barrier. I'd still have to fight enemies, so they couldn't attack me while I did the eating, so this wasn't as simple as it seemed, but it is as ridiculous as it seems. Of course, the best defense is an impenetrable one, and the Candy Corn in Costume Quest 2 doesn't start out that way. You have to really build up its defense power, but once you do, and give it some strong draw aggro abilities, you have a solid tank for your party. And the number one way to use candy in video games is to make areas entirely out of candy. Though it's hard to find ones that are strictly made of candy, cake, donuts, and ice cream are also popular materials. And I don't care if these were largely inspired by Candyland and Hansel and Gretel. I count them as long as they are their own worlds. This setting can work with any genre, within reason. I'd like to see some survival horror try it, not by making the food rotting or decayed, I mean making it scary with everything still fresh. That's the challenge. Anyway, it's not hard to see how Wreck-It Ralph took inspiration from this for Sugar Rush. Plus, even if it wasn't a movie, it wouldn't be the first kart racer to have tracks like this. Which means when Mario Kart later had a game with such a level, it was totally not, uh, rip off. I think Bob Iger's gonna sue somebody. So that's it for my little Halloween trilogy, even if this video won't upload by the time it's over. Next, I will do a little update for a video I did earlier in the month, and then after that, I will finally have my Saturn and Dreamcast video. Until the next upload!